So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Political Vigilante. I'm here with Richard Medhurst. I want to ask you, because I'm asking all the indie journalists this question. I don't know how much of this you're paying attention to, but obviously we have this complete train wreck of these lesser of two rapists running for president uh, in, yeah. in this uh, complete debacle of a country. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, somebody in the set chat, but the RNC convention showed oil refineries over the words, our way of life. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> how do you see, if you're paying attention to this, how do you see the draft Jesse movement of Jesse Ventura? Just too much of a long shot. Yeah. More, look now. Or what do you think? Uh, you know, Jesse Ventura. The, so the first thing that, that I looked up about it, I mean, of course I know his films, but like politically speaking, I know he was a mayor and a governor and, I was curious uh, about his poor, his policy towards Syria and, and the Middle East. So, you know, I went in and I looked and I, I, I listened to him and I was pleasantly surprised uh, because, I mean, I already knew Jesse Ventura is like way better than the political trash ruling Washington. But uh, he gave, a, a, you know, some solid answers um, and, and not the typical crap that you will hear from both parties. I was I was. You know, surprised with that. That was good. Um, I don't know what his position is. Uh, I'm, I'm not too familiar with his position on Palestine and, and uh, the the Israeli occupation. Mm -hmm. So that that's something that I'm not familiar with. I don't know yet. But in general, man, he's leagues leagues ahead of uh, you know either of these goons, uh, Biden and 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 uh, and Trump, of course. I mean, um, I, I think that if I if I'm not mistaken. He can't register on the ballot in all of the 50 states, but he can do like it's technically still possible for him to get elected. He had, he could get enough um, 39 votes in the Electoral College, right? Yeah, there's 39 states that if they if the draft Jesse movement is successful, mm. can get him on as a write in candidate because you can't just write anybody in. You have to be approved in the right. It just shows you how they're doing everything Dude. in power to stop any sort of popular yeah. person from rising up. Um, so. They can get him on the draft. Jesse movement can get on, get him on 39 states ballots. If they do that, that's 400 electoral votes. Mm. So he could win um, or at least get, I mean, I don't know if he, if he got on the debate stage with Trump and Biden, he would clean them up and he, oh, yeah. he would talk because he's a true, like he's an ex Navy seal, not just a pro wrestling mm -hmm. Navy seal. So he, he's very anti-war. And if you watch his show, the world, according to Jesse on RT, which yeah. watched, he's very anti-war, he's very anti-interventionist. He understands the crimes of the oil companies and the military industrial complex. And he has policy towards the middle East that he's studied pretty extensively would be like the right one, like anti-interventionist. And he also understands climate collapse. So he would be like, we're not going to bomb these countries for oil. Cause we're going to get everybody to stop using oil. <laughs> like, Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. How do you end all the all the craziness? The Middle East has been around for centuries. No, we've been meddling for centuries. And if we said, "Hey, we can't use oil anymore. We're not going to bomb you. We're not going to sanction you. We're not going. We just need you, everybody, to get on board." The way the whole world got on board with dealing with COVID, we would mm -hmm. say, "Hey, Iran, Syria, keep it in the ground. We don't want to use it. Like we want to save the planet. <laughs> you guys get to run your life the way you want to love it. The whole countries, China, Russia, we all got to be on board with saving the planet." Yeah, the, the thing is, China, if I'm not mistaken, they manufacture about 40% of all green tech, you know, solar panels, batteries, everything. They, they already understand the game. They're, they're leagues ahead. You know, they're leaving everybody behind in the dust. And of course, I mean, they, they have huge issues with pollution and stuff, but you can see that they are planning ahead for the future, Belt and Road Initiative, everything. And meanwhile, I think the oil companies and executives, they know what you're saying and what, and what I'm saying, but they want to squeeze every single last drop out of the earth and make every last dime they can before they go, uh, go on to you know, the green industry, if we even have a planet left. Uh, so I think, I think that's the problem. But you know, going back to Jesse Ventura, man, um, I think his book, what was it called again? 63 uh, Documents the U.S. Government Doesn't Want You to See. That's yeah. a great one. You know, I really do appreciate and value the the anti-interventionist stance because that that's crucial to you know it's 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 what you need to diametrically oppose this imperialist colonialist neo-colonialist um, mentality and po foreign policy. You have to be, yeah. and and also in terms of sanctions, right? Not just actually bombing people, but the sanctions that quit they kill people too. And um, like I said, uh, that's some that I really must check about foreign policy with candidates. Um, so like, I mean, what, 
I'm not too familiar though with how he would get on the ballot because you said they need to get you need to be approved to get on the ballot in each state, right? So how does that get done exactly? Like what could, what can be done to accomplish that? Draft Jesse website, um, and I believe it's draftjesse.com. And on there shows you what needs to happen. You got to get a handful, a certain number of electors in each state to get him on the ballot in these 39 states. So if you go to the Draft Jesse website, it's very much laid out for anybody. And if you live in one of these 39 states, this is a great way to get involved. He's supposed to speak this Sunday, the 30th, at the Movement for People's Party convention, which I believe is at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So that's. I will be watching that. Yeah, that's how people in the states. Uh, can get involved and get him on the ballot. And if he he just found out about the draft Jesse movement like a week ago, and he's kind of pleasantly surprised about a month or so ago, he said, oh, I'm not going to run. Now he's like, well, I don't know, I might. And that might, you know, he's going to be at movement. Nina Turner is going to be at movement. Chris Hedges is going to be at movement. So there's the, the, the country is descending into a complete civil war that is being fueled by yep. the ruling class and the, the corporate uh, media that is run by the oligarchs, right? Because uh, they need yeah. us divided. And capitalism is very good at keeping people divided along lines of race and ideology rather than them uniting along the lines of class. Um, because that's that's the, true. They, they want to divide people domest domestically and internationally. That's why the colonial entries into you know, smaller, tinier things and support separatist movements anywhere they can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the working class white person that's a the, the white nationalist has more in common with a working class person of color in this country than they do with a rich oligarch Donald Trump or whatever. They just they just don't know that. They, do, they just don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> understand it, that this is really what we are in is class warfare, but they think it's a what we've been told and pushed into a race war because if if everybody lines up along class, well then it's 99% versus a yeah. handful of, of oligarchs and they're going to they're, they're done for. They're done for. They're swinging from trees. It's over. It's over. And yeah. over. Um, so, so that's where they have to divide us. So, um, the thing about if you stop, if you were to do these, if, if, if Jesse Ventura were to somehow become president, and again, I'm not naive. I know it's a, I know it's a, it's a long shot, but if we were to become president and do what we were talking about, we'd like to see in the middle East, first of all, and I want to explain this to Americans. It makes America safer, actually, because we're not bombing and creating more terrorists. People don't want to be terrorists. People don't want to blow themselves up. They want to live a nice, normal life. And if you gave them that life, so not only that, we're stopping to spend all the money on all of these seven wars and all this sanctioning, all these countries we're bombing. We're not spending it on that. We're spending it here at home infrastructure. We're not yeah. in the Middle East, so we're not creating more terrorists. And then the whole world gets together to fix the planet. The whole world gets together and stops fighting with each other. So, like, even the, 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 as you said, like, the, this has a direct impact on on domestic things, and that's why I, I always highlight and and focus and try to bring people's attention to foreign policy because it's like, you know, sixty percent of discretionary uh, spending is going towards the military. Yeah. I mean, even if it was just one percent, it's still predatory and violent and aggressive in nature. So it's wrong by by definition by default. But nonetheless, as, as you said, like the wealthiest nation on the face of the planet should not have people going hungry or without health care or, uh, you know, can't even afford a, a medical emergency and go without going bankrupt. This is not OK. Th this is unacceptable. And, and uh, you know, ceasing this predatory, the aggressive imperialism is, is going to directly benefit everybody at home. Of course, you know, this this is true for any kind of nation or or place definitely, and I wish people need to understand that. Then they would be really, you know, like, oh shit! Now I understand. <laughs> yeah, well, they're they, they, would, they would take a more active interest in it. We're deliberately propagandized and misled and distracted. We're di divided, distracted. They, they keep us divided, distracted, oh, yeah. afraid. That is the goal. And the corporate media does a fantastic job, and not just the news, but I mean, movies, TV shows. Whatever they do a fantastic job, even here you they literally subsidize it. The Pentagon will give you tanks for free, you know. Yeah. Oh, you make a war movie that shows how great America is and the CIA is wonderful and American <laughs> capitalism. Yeah. You, we'll give you scenes, we'll we'll do everything. We you won't have to pay us a nickel. Um, so uh, Richard, thank you for taking time out today, uh, for coming on the show. Where can people follow Always. and subscribe and, and watch what you're doing? 
Uh, they can go to youtube.com slash Richard Medhurst or rockfin.com slash Richard Medhurst. And if you want to look me up on Twitter, just type in a search Richard Medhurst. I will come up immediately and you can follow my work and, and my, my, my videos and everything. So, yeah, that, that's where you can find me. And it's always a pleasure being on the show. Seriously, thank you for having me on, man. Always, always. And you also cover a lot about uh, Palestine, which, which I don't. I don't really cover that because I don't know enough about it, and I apologize Man, for covering enough. I don't blame you because it is propagandized on purpose all over the place, uh, you know. And on top of it, the attacks are so regular you can't even keep up. I'm not. I'm not like that's not hyperbole or exaggeration. They've been bombing Gaza for ten days in a row now. Jesus. I, I can't keep up with the the number of airstrikes. This, I'm just talking about this. Like, never mind the the wars in 2014. You know, in in, in uh, the flotillas that were coming and they were just you know uh, boarding ships like pirates and throwing civilians over. War. I, I mean, it's just so many atrocities happening all of the time. It, it, it's it's exhausting. Uh, you know, to 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 keep up with that. I don't blame you. Uh, and it's also horrible look, having to to watch your people die every single day like that. It's it's unreal, man. Like, you know, I I, I just one one last note. You know, I, that I want to say because. I, I don't believe in conflating um, or, or drawing away and, and mixing together like both struggles. Uh, what I mean by that is like, you know, if you look at the Black Lives Matter struggle in the United States and the racial inequality, I mean, this goes back hundreds of years, right? We got genocide and we got slavery and we got segregation and all these things. And the Palestinian struggle, like each of these things, they are their own attention and and. Uh, activism and resources and justice, right? But I would like to draw people's attention to the fact that like what you see in the streets in the US, Palestinians are living that every day and the media never says a goddamn word. And and they get, I mean, could you imagine if, if the US Air Force conducted airstrikes on people right now protesting? That's what Israel does. They pick off people with snipers. If you've seen Abby Martin's films, they're just protesting and they were picking them off from, with snipers and then uh, using chemical weapons on them. Like it's on a whole other level and no one talks about it. And so I, I just, I just hope I, I, I really implore people to look into that more and, and see what the media is hiding from them because anyone, anyone with a conscience would be horrified to see what's happening there. You know, but once again, both struggles, we need to give them, uh, you know, their deserved uh, activism and attention and time and, and do justice. So, yeah. And there's, there's several things here. There's actually a lot of ex-Israeli soldiers that are speaking out like, this ain't right, man. I think it's called break the silence or something. Um, yeah. And so they're realizing this isn't right. And I want to ask you this before you go. Do you, cause I'm, I'm, what I'm watching happening in the United States, I'm like our oppressive police department and federal troops, like what has been happening just the last two nights in Kenosha, Wisconsin, what happened for weeks in Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis and Los Angeles and all these cities. Um, I feel like we're very close to the American people being an activist, being treated the way Palestinians are being treated by the Israeli army. Do you see that happening here? I mean, U.S. cops are literally trained by Israelis. They have a grant program. Uh, I, I'm, I, excuse me, I do not remember which state it was exactly. They have, actually have several of them. So please just Google the grant programs. You will see that they, the uh, universities offer this. How nice, you know, like they have grant programs where police departments can sign up and then they go and receive training from uh, Israeli border police or the IDF. And, and you got to remember these, the IDF, Israeli police, Israeli border police, they're an occupation force. <laughs> they, they are, there's by, just by being on Palestinian land, they are committing oppression by, by ex exiling people, kicking them out of their homes for 72 years. That's ethnic cleansing by definition. That's the textbook definition of ethnic cleansing. Never mind genocide and the brutalization. You know, this, what they did to George Floyd, put, cutting off someone's oxygen supply, putting your knee on their, on, on their neck. That's an Israeli tactic that is used every single day in Israel, uh, in, in the Israel occupation against Palestinians. Every day. And no one hears about it. No one cares about it. You know? And uh, just around the same time they killed George Floyd, they killed a, 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 an autistic Palestinian man. His, his name was Iyad Hala. No one covered it in the West. Man, my heart broke watching his mother cry about that. He's autistic. They, they, they put three rounds with an M16 into his chest at point blank range after his teacher told the fucking soldiers he has autism and there's no weapon. Why are you chasing him and why did you shoot him in the leg? They just executed him. No one talks about it. No cops are prosecuted. We don't know their names. No one's been jailed. No trial. And then they raided his parents' house. 
they sent the Shen Bet, which is the Israeli equivalent of the FBI, to raid his ha family's house after they executed their fucking son because they're trying to find something incriminating. And they didn't even let them have the body for a few days. I mean, just unbelievable. And you cr crickets all over the planet, crickets. And he, that's just one example. And how can you look at that and not be heartbroken, man? And these people are trained in U.S. cops. And, and in reverse, the U.S. is paying for the Israeli occupation. Literally, Obama and Biden, they gave him $38 billion in military aid over 10 years. That's U.S. money going towards genocide. So everybody should be aware. They have a moral duty uh, to be outraged about this. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't know how anyone can look at this and not be, be angry. It's so heartbreaking. It really is. It really is, man. Well, thank you for shedding light on it, drawing the parallel between what's happening here with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and now with Jacob Blake and what's happening in Palestine from the Israeli army. So thank you. Uh, Richard. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on the show, brother. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Um, and I want to tell everybody, uh, Richard and I are both on Rockfin, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. So for $10, you get all of Richard's bonus content, all of my bonus content, Nico House, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Convo, exactly. on down the line. The dollop is just adding it. So, um, you know, we're trying to get uh, more people on that platform. So, Richard, thank yeah. you for taking time to come on the show today. Of course, of course. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, man. You're making Gotham great again, Richard. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Shave your knuckles for justice. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Great ways to support the show are go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you get bonus content for as little as $2 a month, or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. That's the future. Also, GrahamElwood.com, where all my merchandise is on sale and ships exclusively with the United States Post Office, like my Vigilant T Volume 2, The Dark Knight. We only made 50 of them. They're going fast. Go to GrahamElwood.com to support the show. I'm on Venmo and PayPal, P.O. Box, all of that, GrahamElwood.com.